Cherry Springs Star Party. It's probably one of the best star parties on the East Coast. Why? Because it's at a Bortal 2 sky. It's at a fairly good altitude. The weather there isn't always super predictable, but this year I had to pack up the car and go. Especially since I'm a member of the Harrisburg Astronomy Society, which runs Cherry Springs. And really runs very very well everyone tells us that you know we're one of the best run star parties on the eastern board but anyways here's an interview of some of the members all right so adam you're an astrophotographer like me yes sir <laughs> we mostly do astrophotography but i like my visual too and you do some visual too right uh, occasionally on uh, nights like uh last night where uh now we're maintaining social distance i brought a couple scopes to do some visual while the imaging rig was running yeah this is uh this is a pretty good setup this is more wide field right yeah this is a, a fairly fast uh, especially with the uh, the focal reducer uh the native length uh, focal length is uh, 480 millimeters the uh reducer takes that to uh, 384 so uh and, a, and an f 4.8 so that's uh, fairly wide fairly fast yeah, I know. Like, I shoot a lot of narrow, narrow band, and obviously, narrow band cuts right through the light pollution. But like, it would actually be a waste of time for me to drive all the way to Cherry Springs, and at a what is this, Bortle Class Two sky, which is close to Bortle One, but you know, really a Bortle Two. You know, it would be a waste of time for me to shoot narrow band here. So this is a Keller camera, right? One shot Keller. Yes, this is a uh, ASI uh, 294 MC, mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, it, it's uh, it it. it this is perfect the, for this yeah this is the place where you get your your rgb and your luminance data yes exactly exactly and, um maybe like what are some of the things that some people should be like aware of when they're coming to this like how can they prepare obviously i know you're actually set up on a concrete station like it's a round disc it looks like and there's actually a few of them scattered about the field but obviously you need to get here early to get one of these right yeah and and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't anybody with a big daub that wanted to use this because these platforms are ideal for those. Mm -hmm. But uh, with my tri uh it, uh, it it works well on these pads as well. I figured I have less chance of the the tripod sinking into the dirt and losing uh, mm -hmm. polar alignment over the course of the night. So yeah, yeah, I've had that happen to me once or twice. But... Oh, especially as as dewy as it gets here, that can mm -hmm. and, and and this spot specifically gets uh, kind of muddy off pretty quickly. Yeah. And uh, right now we're actually dealing with a lot of pollen coming off of the trees so everyone's kind of like checking their equipment probably checking their optics right now to get the pollen yeah. off of it. And then covering them quickly. Yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right hey thank you Adam. No problem. All right so we're here actually at Cherry Springs and this would have been Cherry Spring 2020 right? Yes we're in the star party for the year and uh, we get we sell up to 500 registrations for it. Mm -hmm. Not all everybody shows up, but we get quite the crowd. Yeah, there's actually quite a few people here. We say about 200. Well, a lot of people, you know, this is our star party plan. They mm -hmm. asked off for work, so they had the time off anyway, so they came up. And it's turned out to be very beautiful weather for it. It is, it is, yeah. I, know, I heard Monday night was a really good night. And Monday night was a good night. Last uh, night was, eh, it was clear. It was clear. Little wisps of clouds came by, so mm -hmm. it uh, wasn't perfect, but it was nice. Uh, nice night to be out here. It wasn't quite as cold. Yeah. But it brought a lot of people out. And some people came up just for that night. That was mm -hmm. because it was such a nice night. Yeah, two of my neighbors actually, they came last night and they are leaving today actually. So, yeah. So, well, let's talk a little bit about preparing for this kind of thing. Oh, yes. I know. My wife and I obviously. We did not bring enough blankets because it gets cold up here. Yes, we're at quite the elevation. It's uh, 2,400 something. It's higher than that. 2,700 here. 27. Okay. Uh, so, and if it's a clear night, you get radiative cooling, where the uh, heat just radiates out of the ground, and the air temperature at the ground level cools mm -hmm. quickly. So, as soon as the sun starts going behind the trees over here, you notice the temperature dropping rapidly. So it goes from 70 to 80 degrees to now you're in the 60s now you're in the 50s and Monday night it's the night when I started observing it was 37 already wow uh, so and that was at the beginning of the night now like where people set up that's kind of first come first serve right yes there's road gravel roads that run across the field here mm -hmm. 
but it's just pick a spot and set up and try to be can um, aware of your neighbors don't sprawl all over the place because a lot of people come and trying to fit a lot of people in the in the area so most people park their car along the road set their tent up behind it set their telescope up behind it and take a small footprint and yeah. uh, then the other thing to be aware of is with other people is don't have white lights mm -hmm. don't be constantly getting out of your car setting your car alarms off and uh, yeah i see some people actually put black plastic bags over the headlights and yes. taillights of the vehicle to you know prevent that here's how i was set up and i actually took quite a bit of the field but that was because in this part of the field there weren't really a lot of other people so we did have lots of space to sprawl out i brought my binoculars my parallelogram i brought one other tripod with the camera and the sky watcher Start Adventure Pro, I guess you'd call it. And then of course I brought my Ioptron with the peer extension that I made and my Skywatcher 80mm f6.3. Had a really good night. I only photographed one thing and that was the Iris Nebula in the big telescope and then the wide field set up. I shot like about three different parts of the sky and got a couple wide angle shots and I also took some sets of fisheye lens up too and got some Kind of neat stuff just of the overall place. Didn't really try to spend a lot of time getting great pictures because I was checking in with friends and also looking at stuff. Now, here you can see us packing up. Of course, we brought a tent and an air mattress. There's electricity here, so you don't have to bring battery packs for everything. And we also brought our bikes because there's actually some bike trails nearby that you can uh, go biking. And now for the extension cords though, I will recommend bring at least a hundred feet if you're coming to a star party. Now, if you're coming when there is not a star party going on, then you can get away with a shorter cable. And in the daytime, there's actually a lot of things to do. There's a nearby lake, you can go canoeing. We actually went paddle boating. There's a little beach, the swimming area. And of course there's lots and lots of other people. There's actually always people there if there's a new moon. And you can, of course, go socialize with other astronomers like yourself with similar interests and just go googly-eyed over other equipment <laughs> because there's a lot of neat equipment there. Here's us on one of the trails. We brought the bikes, and the bikes turned out to be a really good investment, uh, even though they took up some space. Now, for cooking and camping, there are some areas that you can go grilling, but you'll have to walk off of the Cherry Springs field Obviously, don't want any fires there on the field because that would put up a lot of evaporated water. It would really distort maybe people's images that they're trying to get. Here's like a nice wide angle. This is I took with the fisheye lens, just I think like an eight minute exposure. And here's another shot. I've always kind of wanted to get this pot, but it was really easy to capture dark nebula. Within 20 minutes, you know, I was able to capture lots and lots of dark nebula and to see a lot of things. The scene was not very good this night. It was actually kind of atrocious. You can see a lot of the stars are pretty bloated, but it was still a really rewarding trip.